Hi, Chris. Thank you for joining us today. You've got extensive um, experience as a, a, a business and policy advisor, um, as well as an energy transition expert right across the world. As someone who has such a kind of rounded um, insight into the um, energy sector, do you lie awake at night about the current energy crisis we're experiencing? I don't lie awake, but it's uh, certainly a headache, uh, to say the least, in terms of what's happening at the moment. But I think we fi face uh, a huge challenge in terms of energy transition in order to actually kind of meet the goals of, uh, of climate of 1.5 centigrade. So energy transition is actually the kind of critical part of that. But, you know, there are opportunities and hope as well in that uh, in what could be a nightmare scenario, but let's uh, hope for the best in terms of what we can can do around energy transition. And as a consequence of the, the current air, uh, crisis we're facing, sands seem to be shifting beneath the sort of three pillars um, of the energy tran uh, transition, so namely security, achieving affordability, and also sustainability. How is that influencing the energy transition journey? Well, the World Energy Council uh, actually invented the energy trilemma 15 years ago. Uh, and as you say, it has really three legs to it, which are basically net zero, uh, energy security and energy access. I think if we look back nine months ago at COP27, which happened in Glasgow, it got to a point of imbalance and that we were focusing too much on net zero and not enough on the other two areas. What is a concern at the moment is basically that we're a somewhat knee-jerk reaction now focusing much more on energy security and at the expense to a degree of energy access and, and net zero. So certainly in terms of energy transition, one of the factors I think that will indicate whether or not we're gonna make a lot of progress is whether or not we can keep those three things in balance, uh, that we keep net, net zero, energy security and access for people at an affordable level, uh, always in balance, because as soon as we're out of kilter, then we uh, have uh, big problems in terms of pushing that forward. Geopolitics is playing a big, big role at the moment to destabilize that uh, energy trilemma. So we need to focus extra hard in terms of the challenges we face. And it's interesting, you obviously bring the kind of policy makers into this because obviously it's the whole um, energy is becoming highly uh, politicized. I mean, how, you know, you talked about us trying to keep the trilemma in balance. How should the policymakers, what should their priorities be to ensure that we do keep that balance that's, that's needed? You know, energy has become very, very uh, politicised, as you said. Geopolitics are very difficult at the moment. World Energy Council is a not-for-profit and it's independent and neutral. Uh, and uh, the organisation was set up uh, 100 years ago and uh, its aim was really to move beyond the kind of politics because energy is something that is uh, pretty fundamental to the development of humans and therefore uh, actually kind of politicizing it uh, holds that back. So we think the Council, World Energy Council got a big role to play in terms of actually making sure that that discussion across all nations continues uh, above and beyond the kind of politics to make sure that we do get this balance uh, that we spoke about between net zero uh, energy security and access uh, happening. The difficult thing is keeping keeping the conversation together. And at the World Energy Council, you're, you've got a very strong focus um, on the humanising energy mission. Um, and obviously that's to bring clean, to have a clean and just energy transition. And that's for uh, people all across the, the globe. Um, you know, why is it important to place people and communities at the heart of the energy transition? Well, certainly from a kind of philosophical point of view, the World Energy Council sees that if you, we can't achieve an energy transition unless it involves people. If we try and do an energy transition that is completely top down, that comes from governments and policymakers and big companies, particularly in an age where basically the, the lack of uh, trust of, of governments is declining quite, quite significantly. So you may have seen uh, quite recently um, in Nigeria, for example, that the level of trust in government has collapsed quite significantly. Uh, all these factors uh, mean that people are more sceptical about whether or not um, this can happen. If I take one city we're working in at the moment, 82% of the people had heard of energy transition, but only 24% of those people actually trust that the process won't uh, increase inequalities uh, and work for them. So I think that's our big kind of challenge, which is basically how do we 
kind of make sure that this transition is something that involves people and is bottom up as well as top down. What do you um, think in terms of the management of the current energy crisis? Are people being put at the centre of this sufficiently or or not? I, I suspect I know the answer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we could say at the moment that we're sort of sadly lacking on that. I think to a degree in terms of our chances of hitting 1.5, which are receding quite quickly, mm -hmm. actually that uh, because we're not involving communities enough, uh, that, um, you know, that, that diminishes our chances of actually kind of achieving that energy transition. But if we look on the brighter side, uh, we have a partnership with uh, BBC Worldwide. Uh, and uh, uh, last week they reported to us that the number one search on BBC Worldwide, which has over 50 million uh, viewers on average every day, uh, was energy. That was the number one thing that people were searching for. So clearly, actually, what's happening at the moment is actually kind of uh, figuring in everybody's day-to-day -day lives. Uh, and, they're, and they're keen to find out more. So I think that's a very positive thing mm. that basically people are now starting to kind of look at what is going on in energy, maybe how I can get involved in energy, you know, and, uh, you know, what is it going to mean for me in the future? I think that's a very kind of positive sign in terms mm. of where things are moving at the moment. Very much so. And, um, I mean, are you positive that we can decarbonise economies without um, destabilising destabilizing society. You think that is a, an achievable goal? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is it easy? No. no. Uh, is it uh, going to involve some kind of uh, difficult and tough decisions? Uh, absolutely. But as I was referencing in before in terms of those, that data about where people are, you know, they're, they're kind of pretty engaged in the process, uh, but not trusting of it. And so in a way, uh, in the same way that we had the financial crisis 10 or so years ago, where people are very skeptical of, of bankers and the financial system, I think we face a very similar situation in terms of where energy is today and uh, the, the amount of trust that people have in, in that system and that, and that transition. So we need to build some trust bridges to make it happen. And you know, if we can do that, then there's a much more positive outcome that can come in the future. Wonderful. And do you see the World Energy Council having a real pivotal role in building those trust bridges as you describe them? Yeah, I think that uh, certainly in terms of the last uh, three years, we've changed our mission and focus now to be on humanising energy, to deliver the clean and just transition. Um, the one additional thing I would add is, is at scale, because if we do small projects uh, in this country and that country, the World Energy Council has members in 93 countries, I think it is. Um, so there's a possibility to do it in many places around the world. If we only do it in one or two, it's not gonna make the, uh, the difference. So actually doing this at scale in all 90 plus countries is something that we aim to do. And that's our, our kind of key mission now in terms of the World Energy Council. You obviously used the phrase, and I've used the phrase, just transition. I mean, what, what does just transition mean to you personally? I go back to that statistic that, that only 24% of people uh, trusted the, 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 the transition would be beneficial to them. And so a just transition to me is partly that uh, it delivers, um, you know, jobs that, that are good for people, uh, that are sustainable, that can offer them a degree of kind of um, uh, income and, and prosperity. And at the same time is that they recognize that that, that transition is, is a benefit to them. So the 24% would go up way beyond 50 or 75%. That would be uh, the, one of the key, kind of key indicators of whether or not a kind of just transition is actually happening. Uh, so I think it's, it's not really my, my opinion. It's actually what people are thinking and experiencing about this transition, I think, which is the, the most important bit. Chris, we're obviously sitting in Berlin and we're enjoying the SET Tech Festival here. What can other cities learn from Berlin's approach to, to the energy transition? Well, I think uh, one of the reasons why we're here in Berlin is actually that, that you know, the government and the city have brought together a number of entrepreneurs in, in energy and clean technology. Uh, I think that's a kind of critical part of that energy transition. But also what's uh, really kind of heartening and positive is actually when you walk around the streets you know, you see signs about, you know, let's make Berlin, you know, uh, net zero by uh, 2035, I think it is. But they've got a real target and you can see that people are actually kind of engaged in that. There are loads of different things that, that are actually kind of driving that, you know, so you see a lot of people 
uh, using public transport and bikes, uh, a lot of kind of um, vegetarian food and the mix that you have there. So, it, you know, I think the community in Berlin uh, is really engaged. And so I think that that's one thing that a lot of cities could learn from, which is basically that uh, clearly the kind of community is mobilized in, in Berlin to help uh, deliver this transition. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks. It's been great. Thank you.